All right, so MVC, what is it? As I mentioned uh, last time, it's essentially a way of dividing up your application, all your source code, uh, into three different camps, okay? The three camps pictured here uh, are the model camp. The model camp is what your application does, okay? Nothing about how it's drawn on screen or anything like that, okay? It's not how it's displayed, it's just what it is. So for a calculator app, what it is, it's a calculator, so the model is probably gonna be the part that does calculating, okay? Next piece is the controller. The controller is how your model is displayed on screen. Okay, it's kind of the how. This is basically all your UI logic goes into your controller. All right, and the view you can think of as your controller's minions. Okay, the things that the controller's gonna use to put things on screen. So that's buttons and labels and tables and all those kind of things that uh, the controller needs to display what's in the model and to get input from the user to update the model as well. Okay, so those are the three camps. Now, it's one thing to decide where things go based on the description of the camp, but a really important piece of it is the communication between camps. What's allowed, what's allowed, what's not. And when communication is allowed, how do you do it, okay, in iOS? How is that communication facilitated? So to help with this, I've kind of uh, dr drawn here this little Y in the middle. It's kind of like road signs, okay? It's so like double yellow at the bottom there is don't cross. And then solid white is, yeah, you can cross, but you're not really supposed to generally do this without being very careful. And then dashed white is like separating two lanes where all the traffic's going the same direction, so you can pretty much cross over. Probably want to put your turn indicator on, but off you go. Okay, so let's talk about how that works for these three camps. First, let's talk about controller talking to the model. The controller can talk to the model all at once. It knows everything about the model. It can send any message it wants to the model. The controller is in complete control of the model. Okay, and the controller needs that because the controller's job is to present what's in the model to the user or to get information from the user and update the model. So it needs full control. So that's a full green arrow, dashed white road sign, road line there, can do anything it wants. Same thing on the other side. The controller obviously needs to be able to use its minions however it wants to display the model. And most of the time, the connection between the controller and its minions is via an outlet. And you remember we had an outlet on Monday, right? It was the display. You remember that? It was a var instance variable. Display was a UI optional UI label, and that connection is how the controller was talking to its view, okay? That label, that UI label was part of its view. It was a minion in its view, okay? So that's full green communication. You can kind of do whatever it wants. The controller knows everything about both sides. It has to. Let's talk about the model and the view. Those never speak to each other. Why is that? Simple. The model is UI independent, so there's absolutely nothing it has to say to the view, which is completely UI dependent. That's all the view is. The view is just the minions of the controller, and so, you know, they, it makes no sense for these two to talk to each other. So that fire, that's double yellow line, don't ever do that in this class, okay? No communication there at all. Okay, all communication between the model and the view goes through the controller. All right, what about from the view to the controller? Can the view, like a label and stuff like that, talk to its controller? Well, yes and no. The problem with the view is all the minions in there are generic objects, like UI button or UI label. Those were written by Apple years ago. They know absolutely nothing about a calculator. So there's no way to kind of, for them to talk to a calculator and know it's a calculator. Okay, so there's limited communication between the view and the controller, but of course the view needs to talk to the controller because it's the controller's minions and things happen in the UI and needs to tell the controller what's going on. So the kind of communication we have there has to be blind and structured. Blind meaning the objects in the view don't know what class they're talking to, okay, because view buttons don't know anything about calculator view controllers. Uh, and it's structured because since there is no knowledge of the objects on either end, they have to communicate in a well-defined, predefined way, okay? So let's talk about some of those structured ways that the view minions talk to the controller. One of them, you learned last time, is target action, okay? So target action is very simple. The controller hangs a target on itself by defining a method with at sign IB action 
on it usually in Xcode, so that little dot will work, okay? And then the view, when it wants to talk to the controller, simply calls that method. And that connection, okay, the action being sent uh, from the view to the controller is wired up usually with control drag. You saw us do that. It can be done in code, but 99% of the time we control drag uh, to create this target action connection. So there's an example, very simple communication between a minion in the view, like a UI button, and the controller via the method, okay? Simple one. All right, what else, what other kind of communication we have besides target action? Well, sometimes the view needs to communicate something a little more complicated than just, I was touched or something like that, okay? Uh, for example, it might be a scroll view, that's a generic view minion, and it might need to tell the controller, hey, uh, this guy just started scrolling, okay? Or the person zoomed into this zoom scale, all right? So it wants to notify the controller because the controller might need to know that and react to that, okay? Maybe it, it affects the model when you zoom in or out. Um, also, maybe the view, like the scroll view, needs to make sure it's okay to do something. Like if the scroll view says, should I allow vertical scrolling right now? Maybe it wants to ask the controller that. So you have a lot of messages that have words in them like should, will, and did, okay? that the minions want to ask questions uh, of the controller or involve the controller, okay? So <coughs> this is done via what's called a delegate, and we're going to talk about delegation next week. And the word delegate is appropriate here because essentially the view's minions are delegating some responsibility to the controller, okay? The way this is implemented is very simple. Delegate, the delegate is just a property in the view and that property, you might ask, what's the class of that property? Because, you know, uh, the view doesn't know anything about the calculator view controller. And the answer is that it's not going to be a class. It's going to be uh, what's called a protocol. Okay, and we're going to talk about what protocols are. Protocols are basically just a description of a bunch of methods that the other guy promises to implement. Okay, and so if you could imagine if the controller would promise to implement these will, should, and did things, then the view could talk to it even if the view doesn't know what class it is. Okay, now similarly, there's an important aspect of MVC, which is that the views, okay, this view camp, cannot own the data they are displaying, okay? Now, how are they gonna display it if they don't own it? Well, they're gonna ask for it from the controller all the time, and the controller is gonna get it from the model, okay? So that's another kind of protocol, but instead of will, did, and should, you've got messages in that protocol like, Give me the data at this location, and how many pieces of data are there, okay? Things that are asking about the data, so the view can figure out what's going on uh, and display it, okay? And that's also done with delegation, although we call that delegate the data source, okay? So there'll be another property on some views uh, called the data source, which is this protocol-based pointer, basically, to another object, and the controller sets itself as that so that it can get involved in providing the data for the view. Okay, so those are the ways that the view can communicate to the controller. You can see they're all predefined, well-defined ways. They're not just open-ended, okay? Now, uh, this leads to a situation where the controller's job can be described as interpreting and formatting the model data for the view, okay? It also interprets view input for the model. So it's an interpreter between both. That's its controller's job. So that's really where all your UI logic is, is in there. Okay. How about the model? Can it talk directly to the controller? Absolutely not, because the controller is your UI logic, and the model is UI independent. So there's absolutely no way the model could have anything to say to the controller. However, what happens if the model, which is UI independent, has some data that changes, okay? So it's maybe the model is representing data on a network and someone is changing something on the network and it's changing. How does the model let the controller know? Well, to do this we use what we call a radio station model, okay? So the radio station is just a thing that the model can set up, set up its own radio station, and it broadcasts on that radio station whenever anything interesting happens, okay? And then the controller just tunes in to that station. So the model is not really talking to the controller, it's just talking to anyone who wants to know what's going on in the model. Now, all that communication on that radio station, since it's done by the model, has nothing to do with UI. It's about the data in the model. I have new data, my data changed, those kind of messages are going out on this radio station, okay? Now, other 
radio stations can be work between other camps besides the model and the controller. And some have asked, hey, can I just create a view that tunes into the model directly and short circuit the controller? And the answer is no, you don't want to do it that way. Okay, you would want to have the controller tuning in to the model and have the controller set up this generic view thing to display the data. Question. From a conceptual standpoint, it's easy to understand what the controller and view are. Are the model just like your idea of how those two things are implemented in the software? Uh, so the question is, uh, so it's easy to understand uh, what the controller and view are. They're displaying the UI. Uh, the model, it's less easy to kind of conceptualize what that is. So what is the model? Um, really, the model, it takes a little more design. But you, to design the model, you have to think about what is it my app does fundamentally, n independent of how it would be displayed. Like imagine I wanted a calculator and it had a command line interface where I could type 5 times 3 equals, and it would work. OK, well, that's a user interface. But the calculation, the actual multiplication and stuff, that would be in the model. So the model is more about trying to understand what it is your application does, not how it's displayed. That's the separation that we have to do in this design. So it's kind of like an algorithmic implementation. Yeah, it's more the algorithms, the data, the databases and stuff like that are more in the model. And you'll see it by experience. We'll do it with the calculator today, and you'll get an example of how that plays out. Um, OK, now, this all only builds one MVC. OK, one MVC generally an iOS controls one iPhone screen. Or maybe on an iPad, it's two pieces or three different pieces on the iPad screen. In other words, this is only controlling a little part of your app. To build a real app, we have to take these MVCs, make a whole bunch of them, and combine them. OK, that's how we make a big app. All right. Now, when we do that, it's just still important that the communication is well defined. And basically, the MVC, an MVC can only serve as part of the view of another MVC. Okay? Do you see how this is arranged up here? If you look at any of the purple controllers up there, you notice that any arrow they have to another MVC goes out that view side. Okay? So we always want to think of these MVCs as part of the view of another MVC. And there's some MVCs like tab bar controller, that's an MVC that's provided to iOS, where you might have three or four other MVCs as part of its view. And those are the things when you press on the tabs at the bottom, you see a different MVC, right? So that's what we built an app out of four MVCs, let's say. One of them is the top level tab bar controller, and then we have, let's say, three uh, other MVCs. And those three MVCs might do completely independent things. And as we build this, we really want each MVC to be completely self-contained. Just like when we design objects, we want them to be completely self-contained. We don't want them reaching into the internal implementations of other objects. Right? So in some sense, we're building an object-oriented system here out of MVCs as well. Okay, now you'll see how all this works. In week three, we'll start doing multiple MVCs and it'll all make sense. Okay. One thing we don't want to do, of course, is build something where the MVCs are not working together. If these arrows start going in every which way and direction, then there's going to be no way to understand how your app works once it gets to a certain complexity. It's just going to be beyond your comprehension, okay? So we don't want this. This is bad.